Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Birdie Consulting Group. To get more information about our coaching, publishing, executive ghostwriting, and podcast production services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Birdie, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. Today, we're being joined by Debbie Dessinger, author of PR Magnet. Debbie, welcome to the show. Thank you, Paul. It's so good to be with you. Did I pronounce your last name correctly? Dessinger. I was it's so mouthful, close. But, uh, <laughs> you can call me DD for short if you like. Well, DD, I, I appreciate that. Are you ready to get started with the show? Yeah, definitely. All right, let's do it. Question number one. What is the one piece of advice that you would give to a first-time author who is currently writing their book? Yeah. So two things, because I teach book writing. So this is a big question, and it's an awesome question. The first thing I would say is create community. When you create community, whether you're joining a book writing class whether you're going to some kind of writer's thing once a week, whatever modality you're going to choose, create community. What happens when you have community as a writer is you become accountable. One of the biggest things I have found with the writers I know and work with is completion. Because most people, when they get into a book, don't realize it's a daunting task. For most of us, I mean, my, one of my books is over, for over 400 pages. One of them is 250. One of that, you know, they took research. There was a lot of components that went into my books, so they were not going to be a fly-by-night book. They really took what they took plus the editing process and reading out loud and all of that stuff. It, w- it meant something to have to show up. And so that's something I imbue all of my classes with and all my attendees, that we're really here to support one another. So we not only talk about the process, but people bring their work to read. So in real time, uh, they're hearing their own words, and they can make adjustments. And they know, I have to write this many words by this class. So accountability is huge. I would create that to keep on track. And the other thing I would suggest is be specific. It's very, um, well, it, it potentially is easy to write generically. But that's not what brings a reader in. What brings a reader in is being specific. When you have what the person likes to eat, doesn't like to eat, how they respond to things, quirks about their body, their personality, how they relate to people, the more you can do that, the more you will bring readers into your world, like create a whole world they step into every time they open your book, either print or digital, digitally. So be as specific as you can and go there. And if you think about yourself or anybody you know, and even if you're writing a memoir, you're not generic. There are things about you that make you so unique. Also, your journey so unique. So go there. Like pull back the curtain and allow us to step into your world. And what do you feel is the hardest part about getting published? So... My answer is nothing, because <laughs> I, I have two things. I mean, first of all, I generally tell people self-publish. If it's your first time out, self-publishing could not be easier. It's inexpensive, simple. You're done. You don't have to keep 500 or 1,000 books stored in a closet somewhere. Somebody's doing the printing for you and the, and the selling and sending. And So I just find that, for the first book especially, very easy. Now, to take that to the next level, somebody who is looking for a more traditional publisher, here's the thing, because I also do something called a a bestseller book launch, and I launch authors to a guaranteed international bestseller. And I have people who come to me who are first-time authors ready to rock and roll, but I also have people who come to me who have already launched their book, Paul, and they have horror stories to Mm -hmm. tell about traditional publishers. It's a nightmare. And so because the industry, like, let's pull that curtain back a little, you know, that industry went bankrupt. 
right? They weren't paying, the publishing industry was not paying attention that the digital world was here to stay. Like everything else, right? Music industry, news industry, radio industry, they all laughed and mocked, oh, you know, internet, that won't happen. And well, it happened. And people have been running to it in droves and enjoying it. And so uh, the publishing industry is not what it was like another time where you got an advance and, um, and it's expensive. So it, it costs a pretty penny. They often will take their time. It can be one to two years before your book comes out. They have the say in your cover and your title. And most importantly, 5% of every book is writing it. 95% of every book is what happens after. So you really need to have a marketing plan for the after the book. And these publishers, the majority, do not have a marketing department. So people get involved. It's incredibly expensive. They're expecting their book to come out quite quickly and well, but things are being changed and not to their liking. Uh, they're, they're just spending tons of money, but the ROI is not there. The frustration is. So that, I think, is the hardest part mostly when somebody is, a little green or hasn't been asking the right questions to know who to work with if they want to go more traditional or hybrid publishing, they need to ask those questions so they are sure to be aligned with the right person for the right result. I think the most important question you can ask them too is what are your core values? Because anytime I work with anyone, any strategic partner, any business, that's the first question I ask. And if they can't answer that question within five seconds, I don't work with you them. You mean the author? Well, in regards to other businesses, you're talking about like working with publishers and working with some of these oh. other companies. That's one of the things I always ask them core values. No, with, with the customer, I always ask them the main thing is, you know, tell me about your book and what's the main thing that you want to accomplish? Because I think those are two right. critical questions that you must ask. Agreed. And then will you repeat that now that I understand? So when you're uh, looking to work with a company, what is your question, your core values? Yeah, I ask, what are their core values? Um, what do they believe in? What's their main philosophy? With mine, it's always truth and service and truth and helpfulness. It's a Latin phrase, veritas et utilitas. And it's something I take very seriously because when you're working with these companies, it's got to be the right fit. Because as you mentioned, there are a lot of fly-by-night publishers that are out there. And you really do have to be client centric or else you know you're not going to last very long yep thousand percent and so i like that you know core values is lovely and i would you know be really specific before you sign any contract mm -hmm. read it you know are you going to give me a marketing plan yes no? really what kind of say do i have about the content of my book the title of my book the cover of my book like all of that needs to be outlined and really clear up front and there's nothing wrong with asking for some references or just looking on their website and finding a couple of authors and reaching out yourself. Hey, I'm thinking about working with these people. You know, if you don't mind being honest with me, what, how did you feel? How was the experience? And see what they have to say. You can learn a lot from other authors. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about marketing, which is always, I think, probably one of the um, funniest, funnest parts in regards to this journey, but please share a marketing strategy that you have used in your book launches that has worked well. Three things, timeline, relationships, and also bots. It's a mouthful, also bots. Okay, timeline. My suggestion always is to map out a timeline. Super easy, by the way. It's like if you write down all the components you're going to need to do your book, such as writing it, editing it, getting a graphic designer to make the cover, getting endorsements, any photos. I'm going through my brain as I'm doing this. I think <laughs> I said editing already. Um, you might want to do proofing with people, actually have people beta test your book and give you some feedback. There's also that. And then the, the whole back end or, or pre-launch, which is your marketing aspect, right? You want to make sure you have a complete marketing um, bullet points as well. And then you want to put it in a timeline so you know tick, 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 and from here to there how to do it. You basically go out to the future where you have your best-selling book. And to bring it back to where you are right now today, it's reverse engineering. 
that's your timeline. You don't need a lot of details, just have bullet points. The rest gets filled in as you do it. Relationships is, is segundo. Relationships are so important. Build relationships with influencers. They can make your book. They can talk virally about your book. If you are loved out in your community, people will, of their own volition, take it upon themselves to say, my buddy, my colleague, look what they wrote. Isn't this exciting? Sometimes they'll do a mailing for you if you put together a copy. There's a lot of ways to play it. But I, especially my first book, which was Dare to Dream, This Life Counts, I was a complete novice when I did this 11 years ago. And this wasn't a time when so many people were writing books either. So there wasn't a lot of information out there. And I had written my book. It was fully edited. It was actually ready to go. But because I was so green, I was launching it in late November. And I had a phone call with an influencer who had offered it to me. And I told her, I'm thinking about rolling out my book around November 22nd. And she gasped and said, that's U.S. Thanksgiving. You never put your book out between November and January. Like, wait till February. So if you want to be a bestseller, it's so much easier. You're not up against all these holiday buy books. And I was paralyzed. Oh, my God, I got myself finally, after over a year's work, I'm finally ready to roll. And this woman is saying, meh, I'm going to have to put you on hold there for a couple of months. And Man, that didn't sit well with me, but I knew she was very good and an expert. So we got off the phone, and I was sitting in that soup. And I went someplace and just sat down. I got very quiet and, like, literally asked the universe, what am I supposed to do? Because I'm pretty disappointed. Should I go ahead and launch my book? Should I not launch my book? What, you know, whatever the feeling is, I'm asking intuition, I'm asking some kind of sign here. And I got the clearest message that said, release your book, we have your back. Yeah. Whatever that means to you, right? And so I was tickled. And I said, all right, you got my back, I believe. And I did everything. Now, did I become an international bestseller? You bet I did. But here's the component. I had built so many relationships over the years with big coaches, big influencers, big names out there, that when it came time for little me author, first-time author, to send copy and say, w would you be willing to send out on my behalf? Hell yes, hell yes, hell yes. All these people are on board. And I am no fool. You know, <laughs> My book at that time did so well because these people had my back because they said, we'll send out on your behalf. We're going to tell our tribe about you. So relationship is huge. And the final thing is for those who like to self-publish, there's something called uh, also about. Like you'll see that on Amazon if you're going to self-publish there. And it's basically an algorithm that recommends products in a variety of places. And there's actually an also bought section on every product page. Now, I'm, I'm pretty sure everybody who's listening to your show, Paul, <laughs> buys things on Amazon. And if you'll just scroll down every time you buy, you'll see the also bought section. So in your case, when you're selling your book on Amazon, there are things you can do to give the algorithm useful information about your book, and it allows it to recommend it to the right people and the right places. You know, you could always... Google that or go on the Amazon um, FAQs to find out more. But it's really beneficial. You can do anything from Amazon ads that specifically target authors and books. You can um, use some book promotional services, obviously. And if there's something very funny about this. They actually, uh, keywords and all that are great. And sub-genre are really important, too, for picking it up. They actually recommend that when they're looking for your target readers, it's probably better if the first sale that comes in is not from your mom, your dad, your aunt, or your dog. Because they, they're buying because they love you, but they probably actually read mysteries, biographies, romance, and so forth. So it's better if your real target readers buy your book first. 
so it gets in the algorithm correctly about which customers to send out to. Well, let's talk about your favorite book. So what is your favorite book, and what was the number one thing that you learned from it? Well, John Irving, I love John Irving. Speaking of being specific, he writes the quirkiest, coolest, most detailed characters and situations. And thus far, his book, A Prayer for Owen Meany, is my favorite. I learned the idea of faith. And by the way, I'm not religious, so I just want you to know that I am spiritual. And so this was really meaningful because he has this beautiful character, and there's a situation that takes place where the character, Owen Meany, is describing to his friend John, which of course is actually John Irving growing up, and he describes to him a John that is a total atheist, what it means to believe in something and have faith. And John has no idea what Owen's talking about until they're playing basketball in a church and off in the distance they think there's a statue of mother mary or something and owen as they're playing basketball keeps saying to john can you see the statue john turns around yep i can see the statue well they keep playing and the sun starts to set can you see the statue john turns around it's kind of difficult but he can still see the statue the sun is completely gone down they're still playing basketball and owen says can you see the statue John turns around, he says, no, I can't. And Owen says, do you know it's still there? And John says, yeah, I know it's still there. And Owen says, but how? How do you know it's still there? And John says, because I know. I just know it's there. And Owen said, that's how it is for me with God. That's why I believe what I believe. I can't see it, but I just know it's there. And I was like, boom, mic drop. I just thought that was the most beautiful way to describe something and have this character have that awakening, that new awareness, certainly of how his friend felt about that subject. And for a final question, what is your favorite quote and why? My favorite quote is, everything happens in life for you. Trust me. Why? Because life is filled with ups and downs, ins and outs, yings and yangs. I mean, life is interesting. It's complex, right? And it's mostly marvelous, but sometimes things befall us. And rather than get really immersed in victim-type mentality, I think feel your feelings, obviously. You know, connect with whoever you do to get through it. You know, do all the healthy things. And remember, we're sometimes given darkness in order to be grown. And I can speak to this so directly because, like anyone else who's probably listening, I have also had my moments. And boy, when they happen, you know, then it's not fair and this stinks and why me and all of that stuff can come up. And if you can remember, like your future self is out there somewhere saying, trust me, this is the dark night of the soul. But when you come through this, you're going to be so different and life is going to be so much more awesome. So everything happens in life for you. Trust me. Dee, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. What is the best way for people to find you online? Cool. So my initials are Dee. Nobody really calls me that. That was a joke. But <laughs> <used> to, <laughs> to, to call me that. And it, my website's very easy. It's my name, which is D-E-B-B-I, no E, D-E-B-B-I. And the last name is Dashinger. It's Austrian. So it's spelled D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R. And for anybody who's interested, I have a gift for you, if you will go there to debbiedashinger.com, and that is how to get free publicity and be interviewed on media right now. So it's a report I put together for your audience, and I would love to give it to anybody who's interested in getting more exposure for their book, their business, and their being. Well, Debbie, I want to thank you once again for being on the show, and I wish you all the best in your author journey ahead. Yeah, thank you, Paul. It's been a pleasure. Thanks again for joining us today. To learn more about how you can be featured in our brand new Get Published Business Book, go to getpublishedpodcast.com.